Cryptids, you know them, we love them. Creatures outside of the realm of accepted science, undiscovered and unexplainable in both evidence and testimony, that just so happen to make up the vast host of creatures that we as horror fans enjoy to be terrified so damn much by. From amorphous blobs to unexplainable tentacle creatures to vampires and alien brains that seemingly appear out of thin air, the concept of a cryptid is an interesting one and if anything, it keeps us on our toes when walking in a dark forest late at night. Well, we laid out some pretty eerie tales from our first part of this video but as always there are many more for us to take a look at so hello horror fans what's going on and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube top 5 scary videos as per usual I'll be your horror host Jack Finch as today we creep back through the hallowed halls of the inexplicable and take a look at the top 5 scary cryptid stories that are allegedly real part 2 roll the clip For the curious amongst you, that clip was from 2018's A Quiet Place, which is a fantastic display of suspenseful horror compared to something recently that I didn't particularly like. Featuring a world where the one cryptid that you wouldn't want to be real turned out to be very much real. Yeah, what do you think? Would you survive A Quiet Place? I better get practicing. Kicking off at number 5, the Loveland Frogmen. Hailing from the misty swamps and vast wetlands of rural Ohio, the Loveland Frogmen, also affectionately known as the Loveland Lizards, are a cryptid unlike no other and have reportedly appeared under several bizarre circumstances on a regular basis in Ohio's Clermont County. Allegedly, the first sightings of these eerie bipedal amphibians first occurred in 1955 and has proven to be one of the most intriguing cryptozoological mysteries in North America. The creatures themselves allegedly live in the temperate forest and wetlands of Clermont County and are able to survive the cold winters of the region without having to hibernate. Useful. During their first sighting at approximately 3.30 a.m., a local businessman was driven down a lonely stretch of road, running alongside the Miami River on the outskirts of the small town known as Loveland, Ohio. Suddenly and out of nowhere, the man claimed to have witnessed three bipedal quasi-reptilian entities emerge from the dense reeds and begin to congregate by the side of the road. The man slowed down and turned out his lights as he pulled his car up to a curb to observe these creatures further. He claimed that they stood between three and four feet tall, were covered with leathery skin and had webbed hands and feet. Their most most distinguishing feature though was their distinctly frog-like head, which the man claimed bore deep wrinkles where their hair should have been. Well, since then, over five more sightings of the Loveland Frogmen have occurred over a 60-year period. What do you guys think? What's going on, Ohio? Next up at number four, the nameless thing of Berkeley Square. And I absolutely love this story either way, because if you've ever heard of the famed 50 Berkeley Square in London, England, then you'll know that, cryptid or not, this place is terrifying enough. It's proof as well that there are some cases out there which irk on the realm of the paranormal and become a category so unexplainable that they don't really fit into anything, or can fit into anything. I don't know, it's pretty nebulous. Either way though, the haunted legacy of Berkeley Square has featured ghosts and poltergeists the world over and it's widely considered to be one of the most haunted places in England. But there is one particular instance that takes the cake, the nameless thing of Berkeley Square. A tale that takes place in 1840 when a 20-year-old Sir Robert Walboys got into a drunken dare in which he had written off Berkeley Square and its paranormal reputation as a whole load of Kaiser Soze. He put money down that he could spend the night in the building's most cursed and haunted second floor and so the next evening did exactly that, with a pistol in his hand for robbers. I guess, and a makeshift pulley line attached to a bell in case he saw anything out of the ordinary. He drank a whole load of courage and tried to get some shut eye, but well of course young Bobby Warboy's story cuts out there, when the landlord was awoken by the bell rig ringing incessantly and ran upstairs to check on him. He found Robert Warboy's dead as a doornail slouched in the corner with his eyes bulging in terror. Legend has it that the landlord witnessed an amorphous shadowy form with slime oozing from it, claws and tentacles and all dripping from its form, suddenly slink back into the shadows of the corner of the room and disappear. And since then, tales of the nameless thing of Berkeley Square are more common than any of us would actually like. Swinging in at number three, the Kinderhook Blob, which is just a great name really, isn't it? And if I'm being honest, the legend of the Kinderhook Blob is exactly what cryptid tales are made of, so strap in. It's sometime in 1962 New York and on six separate occasions, multiple witnesses encountered a floating, mysterious blob-like creature that was so terrifying in its form that two men armed with shotguns fled in terror. The initial encounter was from a 10-year-old boy named Hallen Beck and his seven-year-old cousin, Chari. They were playing in the dense woods nearby the house when all of a sudden they both heard this really high-pitched whistle noise and suddenly 
Eventually, from behind a nearby pine tree, they witnessed a white amorphous object appear in full view, which slowly began writhing toward them. On five more occasions, which insanely would happen over the next 12 years, all the way until 1978, dozens of eyewitnesses would explain in vivid detail similar accounts of an amorphous white blob like creature that would emerge from the woods, often attaching its tendrils to trees whilst incessantly making its way towards its victims, causing them to flee in terror. So much so that on one occasion, two grown men tried blowing it to pieces with shotguns to no avail and then turned tail and ran. What I love about this story is the essence of a cryptid tale. For all intents and purposes, the Kinderhook blob could be a disused weather balloon floating listlessly through the air, but because it was seen multiple times by multiple people in the right setting, the legend of the terrifying white blob quickly became a horrifying reality. Either that or it's a sentient alien life form that's going to consume us all. So. Yeah. Coming in next at number two, the disappearance of Peter Grayson. The Groot slang, or the Groat slang, which in Afrikaans loosely translates to big snake, is a legendary creature widely considered to be one of the continent's most prolific cryptids, and is reputed to dwell exclusively in the deep caves and cavernous systems in the Richesfeld, South Africa. According to legend, the Groot slang is a primordial creature that is reputedly as old as the world itself and dwells within what locals refer to as the bottomless pit, which also, conveniently enough, is also filled with precious diamonds. Well, diamonds historically have a proficiency of attracting daring adventurers, and one of those adventurers just so happened to be an English businessman known as Peter Grayson. In 1917, Grayson and a team of excavators began an expedition into the Richesville cave system, accompanied by several local guides. After heading out into the rocky desert landscape, and upon hearing that Grayson intended to descend into the bottomless pit, unwittingly the lair of the group slang, the local guides quickly left after warning Grayson that they'd lost friends and family to the violent serpent before and they weren't going to do it again. He shrugged it off and alongside his two excavators headed deep into the cave and well, that's the last that they heard of any of them. The Grayson dynasty faded into obscurity after their patriarch was never seen alive again, but as the legend goes, one of the local guides returned to the cave a day or so later after feeling guilty for abandoning Grayson and his team. At the entrance of the cave, he found the body of an excavator half of his body, actually, to be specific. His legs and most of his torso had been ripped clean off, and he died attempting to crawl back out. What a way to go. And finally, coming in at our number one spot, the legend of Yuri Grando. And I just have to tell this cryptid story because it's one of my favorites, and it's also considered to be one of the first historical instances of vampirism. As the legend goes, Yuri Grando Aljevic was a villager and poor peasant from the region of Istria, which now makes up modern day Croatia. Historically, he was referred to as a strigoi, strigon or strigun, a local word for something that resembles a vampire and a warlock. Sometime around 1656, Yuri died due to an unknown illness, but According to legend, he regularly returned from the grave at night as a vampire to terrorize his village until his decapitation in 1672. The legend tells that for 16 years after his death, Europe would rise from his grave by night and terrorize the village. The village priest, Giorgio, who had buried Europe 16 years previously, discovered that at night somebody would knock on the doors around the village, and on whichever door he knocked, someone from that house would die within the next few days. Eventually, the villagers rallied after witnesses saw the corpse of Europe roaming the streets and led by the town's mayor, chased and tried to kill him with a hawthorn stick, but failed to pierce his supernatural flesh. The next night, nine people went to the graveyard and dug up Yuri's coffin, finding a perfectly preserved corpse with a smile on its face. It was Yura with pristine white flesh and no signs of decomposition. They tried to stake him once more, but witnesses noted that the stick would not penetrate its flesh. Eventually, the villagers were so terrified and kind of fed up with his vampire antics that a brave villager known as Stepan Milosic took a saw and decapitated the corpse. As soon as it tore Yuri's skin, the vampire screamed and blood began gushing from the cut. Allegedly, a man that was presumed dead for 16 years. Yeah, that one's pretty worrying, right? Well, there we have it, horror fans. Our list of the goriest cryptid tales from across the multiverse. Why don't you let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below? Before we depart, though, let's take a look at some of your more interesting comments from over the past few days. Chris Diaz says, Hey Jack, love the channel. I'm starting as a writer trying to make some horror short stories and wanted to know what is your favorite horror creature of all time, slash, which one are you the most scared of? Also, if you guys could cover some more cryptid videos, that would be awesome. Well, Chris Diaz, cryptids delivered. And um, best of luck with your horror writing, buddy. My only advice would be to just keep writing and then never ever stop. As for the horror creatures, that is a tough, tough question. My favorite is probably The Thing or Stephen King's Randall Flagg or the Xenomorph. Oh man, don't make me choose, please. As for the scariest, Pennywise the Clown. 
hands down. Well, on that note, horror fans should stick around all the way until the end. If you found this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe bell, and we'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos, and until next time, you take it easy.